What is up, my tubers? Welcome back to another draft here on Arena. Thanks for watching. Hit that like and subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to check out cardkingdom.com slash Numont for all your magic card needs. Apologies, we have one more cube, or maybe you're welcome, depending on. One more cube before Lost Caverns of Ixalan. Uh, I did not manage to record another one during the early access event. So one more cube, and then starting tomorrow or the day after actually maybe we'll still have one more cube i don't remember but anyways soon we'll have uh lots of drafts of caverns of ixalan anyway pick one pack one of this chromat excuse me chromatic cube draft what do we got what am i feeling like we could like first pick thassa do some flicker flicker nonsense could just take gravy train titan always a great one cityscape leveler Swarm Saboteur for the more quote-unquote aggressive. Banky Boy is always good. I don't know. I'm kind of not feeling like Flicker. What am I feeling like? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I guess I could just take Grave Titan, but... Yeah, what the hell. We'll take the Bank Buster. It's colorless. It's good. It leaves us open to anything, so why the hell not, right? Into... Oh, I didn't realize doubling season is in this. That could be fun. Karn, some land, search for his Kanta, commit, black market connections. I am a big sucker for draw sevens. Maybe just take the commit here. I'm in for that. Maybe hopefully wheel the search for his Kanta. Oh my lord, we're getting a third pick, Sublime Epiphany. And he's in, ladies and gentlemen. This is just home. Cyber Siphoner is great. Fires, Steam Vents would be fantastic. Well, legitimately, Sublime Epiphany is just one of the best cards in the cube. Uh, ooh, Yarok is really, really fun as well, if you can get that going. Tons of triggered abilities that uh, you can utilize for good effect. Yogmoth's insane versus creature-based decks. Ashiok's solid, not amazing, but solid. Omnath, I actually think this Omnath's pretty weak. You have to be playing like green generally for this to get any good. Otherwise, you're just gonna gain four life with the landfall trigger the majority of the time. Hollowed Fountain, niv I mean, we could take any number of cards here again and be pretty happy with it. Kind of want to take the Yarok. Kind of want to take the Niv-Mizzet. Kind of want to take the Hollowed Fountain. I don't know. Should we just try to go into the normal Nummy way of things? I think the Niv-Mizzet's going to wheel. I bet you the Hollowed Fountain's probably the safest best pick. After all. Treasure Map, Cultivator's Caravan... I am a sucker for treasure map. I'm going to be really, really pleased if uh, I open this during any of my Lost Caverns of Ixalan's events. Just a very me card. A couple of okay blue cards. I think we'll go with the Channeler. It's just solid. Versatile enough at any point in the game, right? Clear about a pathway could be good. I don't know why I don't like Bronze Walrus, but it's completely fine. To stick with the blue stuff for nows. One with the multiverse. There's another really fun one. Good, maybe not so much. It's very powerful, of course. It's just... I think C-double is really, really good in this format. Just because everybody is doing some huge flashy things, right? Whether it be some huge creature that you get to copy, or if you get to copy something like a, a time walk effect, you know. I think the C-double is quite nice. Good, good, good pickup. Cyclonic Rift is also really freaking gross. <laughs> uh, this is another one that I've gotten quite a few times now, and every time you overload it, load it, it feels like you can't lose. It's just such a huge blow. Like, everybody's just trying to set up and do cool things for the most part, right? So, it's not uncommon to Cyclonic Rift your opponent and bounce, like, 20-plus mana worth of permanence back to their hands, you know? <clears throat> uh, ooh, we could just take Alchemist Gambit now, as speaking of time walk effects, over commence the endgame? Sure. 
So double red casting cost looks awkward, but then you look at the cleave and it's double red, sorry, double blue and a red, right? There's the search for his Kanta on the wheel. All right. Everything's coming up perfect. What is this mail in my mailbox? New announcements. Get out of here. I don't believe there's Gear Hulk for the instant speed memory. But you can still do some other stuff with the commit to memory. Cypa Cypher wheeling, Steam Vents wheeling. Holy smokies. Man, both are so good, but I'm going to take the fixing. I mean, ooh, the egg and Mizzet. <sighs> I'm going to go with Nib Mizzet here. It's just such a cool win con. Ral's outburst. All right, yep, lock it in. What does it look like we got here, friends? Just classic blue-red Kenjis. Maybe we can get the Oracle of the Alpha for the real deal. All right, good pack. There's a Prismari command here, which I'm probably taking. Although Cold Steel Heart is one of the better accelerants in the cube because it's two mana. If you're not playing green, it's really, really hard to take advantage of. Um, rather, it's really hard to accelerate in good fashion. A lot of the accelerants are three mana, like the Relic of uh, Legends here. So Cold Steel Heart has been fantastic. But man, Prismari Command is so good. It's just so versatile. I mean, we did wheel a bunch of blue and red stuff. All right, I'm going to take the heart. Might not be right, but here we are. As we get the Mizix's mastery now. Going to need to get Magma Opus for this, or a lot more. Actually, no, we have some decent hits right now anyways. Yeah, 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 it's a fun one. So more blue-red Fixing is going to be necessary. Another time walk effect is insane. Would love to take Solemn here. But all of the time walks in this format are, um, I think, too good. Just because everybody's so slow and whatnot. Golos? So if Golos is just five mana grab a land, is that even worthwhile? Maybe not. I bet you splashing rip apart is probably better. And, like, I don't have that many lands right now. If I picked up Field of the Dead, it wouldn't be that impressive. And I don't see us activating the ability, right? I'm guessing Rip Apart's better there. Especially since we already have the Hollowed Fountain, too. A Braid's nice. This is a really good black pack. Cruelty of Gix is fantastic. Eldest Reborn is great. Hostage Taker. Nice pack there. Frost Titties. All right, let's see if we can get a bunch of people with this one, because remember, and I say this every single time because it is relevant to almost every time, this is not Ward. So if your opponent, for example, had a spell that said instant or one mana deals six damage to a creature, you know, one mana, and they cast it with only one mana available, it would get countered. And Arena wouldn't prompt them and be like, are you sure you want to do this? Because this is a triggered ability. Not like Ward. Pretty funny. Wow, some crazy good picks here. I still am not a fan of Agent or Rafine. I don't know why. I'd much just rather take the uh, either like Mythos of Aluna copy effect here or like the uh, Discovery. I guess Mythos of Aluna is pretty good with Mizix's Mastery and stuff too. But I'm going to take the setup effect. Snowborn Simulacra. It's another really fun card again, but not that great. There's a Yorian here. There's a Polymorphist here. Polymorphist could be good. Actually, it's Soren's kind of nice too. Is this a good flicker deck? We wouldn't run it as a companion, but would this be good as just in the car or in the deck? Probably not. Okay, we wield the Relic of Legends. That's pretty good. Remember, we took the Cold Steel Heart out of this pack. So somebody did take the Prismari Command. I'm not surprised. But, oh well. 
like I said, I think the heart was a better choice at the time. I need to make sure that for this Karn's Temporal Sundering, we get enough Legendary Creatures slash Planeswalkers, because right now I am not going to be able to play that. Uh, I don't see us running any of these, maybe, and there's a world where we splash the goose. But yeah, we have one card that fits the criteria. Is that right? Is it just niv -Mizzet? It is. Huh. Yeah, we would need quite a few more to make that worthwhile. Um, I like Charter Course. It's good with uh, the Mastery. I don't know why. Similar to the Walrus, any three mana creature that accelerates has always been something that I just don't like on like some deeper level. I don't have a good reason for it either. It's just I don't care for it. <laughs> Alright, so what do we need right now? If we're just straight up blue red for the most part, I don't I'm not really in need of fixing. I guess Karuga is a legendary for Karn's Temporal Sundering. It's not the end of the world, for example, if we're just running like eight mountains, eight islands, right? Here's the plan. Pack three is going to give me Oracle of the Alpha, Crackle with Power, um, Skull of the Lost Ages. I guess we could run Zergo and Ojatai. It's not a bad one. Oh, actually, no, no, I take that back. I was going to say this pack kind of sucks, but Surgical Metamorph is also an amazing, amazing card in this format. The fact that it copies any permanent is so nuts. Again, the same thing with like C double, because everybody's doing crazy things, this card oftentimes is three or four mana and gets something nut, you know? Form coil's okay. I'm passing what a chariot here. Rashmi's really good. Very easy surgical there for me. Ah, damn, nice pack. To fairy, midnight clock. There's the scholar of the lost. Oh, scholar of the lost a trove, not ages. I think that's what I said. Itali is actually pretty nice. Teferi would be better for the uh, Temporal Sundering, but I mean, I don't pass Midnight Clock. I don't mind passing Scholar, and if it doesn't come back, it's not a big deal, but I do not like passing Clock. The Bad Itali. Wow, this pack is garbage for us. Not even a good land. Like, Fetid Pools would be okay. We, we have, like, the Dispersal it could flash. Sheesh. Really weak pack. Okay, into a rel relatively stronger pack. Baron is quite nice, just for, again, same value as Channeler, although I guess it's a little bit worse than Channeler in this regard. Rogrin Triome, very good, especially if we wanted to pass, uh, splash the white stuff. Teferi is not terrible. Star of Extinction's quite nice. Ugin's good. Hell, could even take the uh, Valky. Slash Tibalt. I'm going to go with the Star of Extinction, though. Unlike um, Wrath Effects in this format, this one also hits Planeswalkers. It's just a nice catch-all reset button. Good old Fibble Fip for the uh, Karn's Temporal Sundering. Or some more blue-white lands. Yeah, we're just not going to be able to hit the Temporal Sundering quota, I think. But I think it's better than taking a blue-white land here for now, so we'll take the Fibblethip. There's a chance. Like, Fibblethip, Hazurgo, Ojitai, Niv-Mizzet, that would be three. One or two more, and we would be able to get there. There's Car- or there, not Temporal Sundering. There's El uh, Alrun's Epiphany now. Fantastic. Another one of the best cards, I think, in the cube. Eh, actually, no, I take that back. Good, but maybe not the busted. <laughs> oh, 
Holy moly. There's the Opus. There's a freaking Chandra Hope's Beacon. There's a Temple of Epiphany, and there's a Rewind. Why are they putting all of the good stuff basically in the last pack? I have to take Opus here. It's too good. Man, Chandra's so insane, too. But, like, I already have the, uh, whatchamacallit, to the <laughs> Mastery, so I kind of have to take the Opus. I've been pretty happy with Jonathan Harker in this format. I think Angrath's kind of nuts, too, if I wanted to grab another black permanent, but I'll just take the one that already fits on color. Electrolyzer's whatever. Teferi Wheeling, Scholar Wheeling. I want Teferi, but now I just have too many big hits for Scholar, so we're going to be kind of forced into taking it. All right, Play with Fire can be cut. Let's see. What else can I cut here? Outburst can probably be cut. Discovery can probably be cut. I actually just picked up a lot of white fixing, too. Let me double-check that Karn's Temporal Sundering. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. No, wait. No, that's an overlap. Yes, I hate how it does this. If it's an alternate art, it shows it in your deck and then one in the sideboard. Like, what? Come on. So, one, two, three, four, five. Good run. Five things that qualify for the uh, temporal. It's probably not quite good enough. I'll just cut the Baron then in that case. Okay, this just looks like a classic blue-red deck. Don't need as much uh, red as we do blue. In fact, we could even probably go down to 10-6 if we wanted. <laughs> Guess that's a little bit bad for Niv-Mizzet, but not the end of the world. Okay, looks good. Classic me, classic blue red, as we wait for the lost caverns to finally appear. Okay, round one go. What do we got? Turn to search for his Kanta on the draw, though. Temple of Malady here for the opponent. Okay, so we just need to find some more mana sources. Bank Buster. I guess we're supposed to get Jonathan online first. Forsaken Crossroads, it's a good land. Okay, let's find a land, please. Nice. What are we discarding is the question. I think it might just be Niv-Mizzet here. Remember, these aren't going to my graveyard, so... It's kind of awkward with the search for his Kanta. And if they just kill the Jonathan, remember, I'm losing those cards forever. My other choice there was to get the treasure map online and start taking it up, but I... I think I like getting the clock online and taking that up instead. Okay, so now whenever there are more creatures enter, they get to seek lands. Right, I'm going to take four here. Copy something, huh? We might even honestly copy a land, but... Let's get rid of the map this time. I think 
think I'm going to, yeah, copy their Forsaken Crossroads on red. Keep lands. That way we have seven mana next turn. Lots of different options we can do here. Hydroid Crisis for three, so I'm going to take seven. Mm -hmm. Okay, probably just going to be safest then to flip Jonathan, exile Star of Extinction, and wipe the board out. Get rid of their blue land here, or their red land. What is this on? That's on white. So let's get rid of their... Yeah, let's get rid of the blue. Now, I might still take four damage if they play another creature and crew the bank buster. But if they don't kill my um, flip Jonathan Harker now... We're going to get to Niv plus Epiphany, and that's probably going to end the game. That's a good sign if they're just using the Bank Buster to draw, especially. Fair enough. Okay. Oh, this is an enchantment. They can't hit that. Oh, that's really bad for them. Jeez. Copy target spell. I can copy my epiphany now, too, can't I? For free. So I'm going to take two turns here. Yep. That's going to be pretty GG, I think. One more turn in the queue. Ping them for a million damage with all these triggers. And take one more turn, and that will probably be just game over. All right, that's going to get exiled with Jonathan Harker. Sure. Because why wouldn't we hit beautifuls? GG's. Dude, niv is so insane. Gotta love it. Well, the opponent did stuff in the early turns, and then I got to flip my Jonathan Harker, and, well, that was the end of it. Nice 1-0 start. On to game number two. Can probably keep this on the draw with Treasure Map. Any blue source unlocks like Channeler to kind of stabilize versus some early creature, right? Um, yeah, we'll keep it. Turn one Esper Sentinel. Oh, God. That a braid was a good draw, but we're gonna maybe have to. Okay, so they're more aggressive here. This is not what we wanted to see. Very, very uncommon to have one drop, two drop creature in this format. One, because there are literally like ten one drops, period. But two, because aggro is not really a thing. They've got a really nice aggro draw, though. Yeah, we're going to have to uh, give them a card and just kill the face breaker. If I miss on land next turn, it's basically all over. Phew. I think we're just gonna draw a card here since we need lands.
Elspeth conquers death and devil's play. Nice. Yeah, happy to trade. Metamorph was really freaking good. Wow. Copy the season pyromancer here is insane. Discard the Jonathan, discard the map, get two one ones. Beautiful. Turns out the best cards in my deck were actually their cards. Ooh, Archangel shoot the pyro? Sure. Game two. We'll go trade, trade, take two. And just go land pass here. Planning on C doubling the Archangel in combat. If they have a Resto Angel, that doesn't work because they can't flicker an Angel. They have a different removal spell. I'll take six, go to eight. Two removal spells? Blast plus something. Oh, okay. Sure. Um, yeah, we're still in a really bad spot here. I'm going to play the Relic, not pay, give them a card, and then I'm going to commit their Archangel right now. So they don't draw another card. If they draw a Mountain, I'm pretty dead. How sick would Prismari Command have been this game, huh? Kill their Pyro, kill their Sentinel. I guess Starve Extinction is an insane draw if we can find it. They should definitely just Angel here. Yeah, put me to three. Okay, Starve Extinction or bust. It looks like that's probably going to be that. So you can see, though, like I said, aggro is not really a thing in this format. I wouldn't call their deck like crazy good aggro, but it's good enough to beat definitely my slowness. I don't think we have any outs here, right? Especially since they hit that third mountain anyways. So it's not like a classically good aggro deck, but it's still faster than the Dirtle decks like myself. So kind of the rock, paper, scissors thing, they can definitely beat me up. One on one. All right, we got crushed in the last one. Let's go win this game three. Very, very similar hands, all these games. This is another hand that's going to get run over by an early creature curve. <laughs> all right, but no early creatures. Good. Um... I guess I'm going to go with Azkanta first here. And try to get Jonathan online a little bit later, maybe the turn before we would flip it. Next turn we're probably going to go with Treasure Map. I was just going to Ley Line Binding our search for Azkanta, that's not a big deal. Oh, if they're more controly, then our hand's great, because the Search, the Treasure Map, the Bank Buster are all very, very good versus that. Ooh. That is a little bit scary to see. Because they are going to be ramping out to scariness before I do. Not anymore. That was a fantastic draw. Uh, yeah, and let's just flip our map next turn, I guess. Crucius is also disgusting. Probably too good to throw away. I think they missed a land drop too, right? 
Right, they pitched burn down the house and they went for expedient, which is less than. So they grabbed something that costs less than five. That thing. That's fine. Don't really mind that they're killing that. So hopefully they play like one more great thing for Star of Extinction to pop off. That's not something to kill with Star of Extinction. Key Minskin Boo, three land. Okay. Hmm. Not great. Um. They got something cheaper than three with Ophiomancer here. I guess I'm just gonna go land pass, and there's no point in opusing their lands on upkeep because they got the treasure. If they didn't have treasure, I could tap both uh, green sources and deny them playing Minsk and Boo this turn, though. Oh, they're going to go for Key instead of uh, Minsk and Boo. All right. Hmm. I wonder if they were worried about me having a counter or something. All right. Um, I think it's still safest to deal one to Crucius here. In case they have a way to kill... Oh, no, no, no. That does actually doesn't make sense. Because I can crew the Bankbuster in response. So what you do here is you just pass priority into blocks. Because if you crew the Bankbuster and then try to bank, uh, block with Bankbuster, they can kill that instead. So they can't kill the 4-4 and kill the bank, but I might not unless they have two different removal spells. Okay, that's fine. Oh, baby, we got it. Okay, um... I just have Opus and a Braid in there, huh? I mean, that's still pretty good. Could also just hold up Commit, though, and wait. Yeah, I guess there's no rush. So Putrefy was the card they hit off of the key to the Archive. Tribal Flames. I'm okay with that. Nicol Bolas, I am less okay with that. That's decent. Hmm. Thing is, I guess I don't want to Mizix's mastery and Give them a fresh seven. Ugh. I guess I could just commit their token. That's probably fine. They only have one card left in their hand. Let's do it. Alright, so a braid. Kill the key. Commit. Opus. They have nine cards in their graveyard, so C double is full value here. Oh, they can draw Bolas and cast it. Two, four, six, seven. That is unfortunate. Wow. <laughs> so 
cannot see double a planeswalker. But what are they going to do? Yeah, they're going to go with uptick and they hit chart a course. Oh, that wasn't what they're looking for. Can I just kill them? No, but they're at two on board. Um... I'm just going to bounce and pass. Vanishing Light. Sure. Karn. Sure. Alright, so they're just dead, I guess. Are you bashful, my Evil cannot withstand a righteous army. Interesting. Well, that was a weird way to win it. Kind of just waited for them to do something better, and they... I mean, I guess if they cop or cast Bolas, we could have copied, but our copy would have resolved first, so technically they would have been able to shoot the other one. Okay, two and one. Game four. Another nice-looking hand. Braid on turn two, map plus activate on three, commit on four if we want to. Just a very, very classic hand. What you got? Turn one mana, dork! Now that is what we call cheating. We are just going to kill the mana dork here, because they didn't do anything with two mana last turn, so. I mean, I guess they'll have potentially three here, but yeah. Good. There we go, map and pass. Ooh, and they missed a land drop, did nothing. Okay. I guess we do run out Jonathan Harker here because between our lands and the map, we can uh, actually flip next turn. It's not a bad one to flip either. So I'm going to go land pass. They do have access to four mana now. Let's make that five. Colagon's command, disgusting. Get rid of the Opus here. Commit their Colagons command. Flip our treasure map. Uh, yeah, let's keep another land for now. Land. Flip Jonathan. Let's see, we don't really need that heart anymore. And then we can cast our Opus here. This is only on my turn, right? Once during each of your turns, you may put yeah. So during my turns, seems good. Well, actually, I guess I'll sacrifice one treasure to get the bankbuster online. We can start attacking with that next turn as well. And I think the damage is already done here, my friend. Do we want to just take an extra turn here, this turn? It's not that good. Probably just going to Scholar our Opus. Attack them for nine. 
<laughs> okay. Big dumb blue red things wins another game. That puts us to three and one. Game five. Nice hand. Love this kind of hand. We're going to lose to early creatures, but if they don't pressure me early, we have some really, really powerful things that we end up doing here. And it looks like the opponent's on a little bit of a slower one as well. Let's go ahead and just immediately start looking for stuff. Tick-tock. I don't want to exile one of my uh, big spells yet, because if uh, Jonathan dies or whatever, those are gone permanently. So for now, I think we just want to exile smaller things. I don't mind exiling the Rift here, for example, and we're just going to shoot that. Fortell. Tap land. This is looking fantastic. Oh, that's annoying. They get to pop the clock, which also stops me from flipping Jonathan next turn. Damn. Good beats. So you get rid of that thing. Yeah, we can just commit any spell here. Skyclave Apparition. Yeah, I don't want them... Hitting my Jonathan. We need to naturally draw a land next turn for the flip, which we did not do. It's too bad. Actually, you know what I can do here? I can attack and then draw two, no discard. It's kind of funny. <laughs> uh. Oh, they get to draw their in um, apparition and eat Jonathan. Damn it. Good beats. I mean, we have the combo, though, so... Time to just sit back and chill. We'll take six. If they don't cast anything, I'll just cast Sublime EOT. If they, wow, nice, nice hit. So, counter, bounce, and draw. Um, bounce the Skyclave, draw a card. Get a 2-2. Two -two. Get the Opus. Oh, we have the full combo. Oh my god. Wow, this is kind of insane. Let's attack for two. Epiphany. Attack for four. Opus. Scholar. This is just getting cute more than good, but Sublime. Return that to their hand. Copy my creature. Copy the Opus now. <laughs> uh, again, I'm just kind of getting cute more than good. But I'd say that's a pretty nice, quote-unquote, turn. It was obviously multiple. And I wish you luck. I have to say, Solemn Simulacrum, not looking like the card uh, my opponent needs at this point in time, but I could be wrong. Sure. One down. But you know what? We can just do it again for the funsies. Oh my gosh, wait. I can cast Metamorph, and then I can see double... Oh, I guess it's the same thing as copying, isn't it? <laughs> and just make a bunch more scholars. <laughs> yeah. We're going for fun silliness here. Doesn't have to be the right play. 4-1, though. No. 
keep uh, the fun times rolling, my friends. On the play? Oh my gosh, our hand's great then. Would be a little bit awkward on the draw. Just a little bit slow, I should say, on the draw. Cold Steel Heart, where are you? Search for his Kanta, where are you? Actually, any of my two mana artifacts or enchantments. All good. Alright, well, can't complain. Jonathan just glued to my hand. Don't really care if they kill it right off the bat. You got me. Oh, it costs two less because Jonathan happens to be legendary. And they get to surveil too. Lucky, lucky. They just double top. That's kind of scary. Clock's online. Bullish Mystic. Yep. I think because we miss a land, let's just go Bankbuster draw and hope that we hit a land here. That's not good. This deck really needs to make land drops, so even missing one like that's pretty annoying, even though I guess we have the clock that kind of was uh, putting us ahead anyways. Rankle! That's fine. They did not attack with the Mystic. But don't we want any? They didn't even use an. They didn't choose anything on that. Interesting. I think I'm gonna just bounce the rankle here. Yeah, I'm gonna draw off the bankbuster. why they didn't uh, attack with the Mystic last turn. Okay, now they're going to choose to discard a card, so let's draw a card in response. And I guess I'm just going to pitch the search for his Kanta. They discarded Key to the Archive! Ooh, we drew Epiphany. Yeah, I gotta go with Frost Titan this turn, though. We'll go ahead and attack for four. The Curtains is slightly annoying if they decide to flip it, but I have three really relevant cards in my hand, so they're not going to be able to take everything. And if they're activating Curtains, then they're not going to be able to deal with Frost Titan. Snakes. Alright, pick your poison, because they are all extremely problematic. What's it gonna be, friendo? It's gotta be Scholar, right? If they take Epiphany and I draw a land, I just get to Scholar it anyway, so... I guess... Yeah, I guess Niv Mizzet's annoying versus their board. Sure. Okay. Um... Well... I think we're just gonna make... A another Frost Titan. So let's bounce the fire, ma bounce the Ophiomancer, make a Frost Titan, and draw a card here. Tap down the snake so that we can attack. Tap down the wrinkle. That is gonna be a little bit tough to beat.
That ain't it. Nobody knows Dominari. I will sacrifice my channeler. <laughs> Haven't you ever heard of personal space? Nice thing is they already have a snake, so if they play the Ophiomancer here, it's not even gonna make another one for them. Kill my bank buster. You can kill whatever. It's all over. All right, GG's. <laughs> Don't even need to cast anything, right? Frost Titans both attack, tap down the only blockers. Okay. Looking good. Five wins. One loss. Game seven ahead. Hey, turn two Cold Steel Heart. And then, actually kind of a bad hand. But, that's okay. Yeah, we don't really want Niv and Scholar here. In fact, what we might actually do is turn two Cold Steel Heart, turn three Metamorph, just to go ramp, ramp, given our hand, and try to get like an early niv Mizzet here. Okay, that was a really good draw. Now I can just go Bank Buster plus draw a card immediately next turn. Yeah, it's got to be better. Especially since I drew another Mountain. If I drew a Blue Source, we could go for Metamorph and try to maybe jam the Niv, but... Hey! Oh, we get to copy that! Yes! Again. Disregard good plays. Make fun plays. That's not very mana efficient. I should foretell and draw a card here. Guess technically I should have drawn a card first, seeing if there was something better to do than just uh, foretell the epiphany, but this is a good sequence for us potentially, right? They've missed it into epiphany. Oftentimes, we'll just end the game. So they went for triple black instead of triple blue. Massacre Worm or something, maybe? Yikes, that is scary to see. Ral is so freaking good in this cube. It's crazy. Okay, well, Frost Titan was nice. Let's tap down their only red source. And then we can hit Ral for four. So if they want to copy a spell, they're going to have to lose Ral. And Frost Titan here having the protection, unless they pay two extra means, it's going to be... Very unlikely that they kill it unless they have a Lotus or something here. Oh, they went for it. It's not what I want to see because I wanted to metamorph the Ral, but nope, nope, that that doesn't work. That doesn't work. Ah, the Frost Titan. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, sometimes. It really do be like that. I told you! I told you, Frost Titan is insane! Insane! Six and one now. Oh, yes. 
counted unless they pay two. Ooh, we've got the mastery. Where's the turn to, uh... Turn to, uh, Opus. We haven't pulled that off yet. Playing against another green deck. Goodbye, Jonathan. You have drowned. This hand needs some help. Jonathan needed to do some heavy lifting. Oh my lord, this hand is bad. Like, I need to draw lands, but I also need to draw some relevant spells. Okay, I guess I'll land off the top and we're doing pretty well, right? Frost Titan into like Epiphany what nonsense. Yeah, if I rip the six land, I it might be hard to lose. You're standing in my way. Build two lands there. Ah, that's not a land, dang it. Or it is, kind of, but not what we wanted. That might be... Well, I mean, if they don't kill the clock, I get to starve extinct. Okay, so land wins here. In essence, land wins the game. How hard could it be to draw a land? I got 12 in my deck. Easy. Hornet Queen and Feed the Swarm Milled. And that is not a land, so... Let's see, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11. I guess I'm not dead. Actually, you know what the safest play is, probably? Well... There are two different lines here. I can Epiphany Bounce Draw. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11. Or I could Frost Titan tap down their Grave Titan. What's better? I guess it's Sublime Epiphany that's better because it draws me an additional card, right? Okay. Need a land next turn. I'm at one. <laughs> one more chance. That's fine. Land me, dealer. Okay, whew. <sighs> I was debating there if I wanted a greeting, or not greeting, gambit first and take an extra turn, but we don't have anything on the battlefield, so that's not super relevant, you know? Hey, even a 1-1 one -one is lethal here. Fine. Okay, let's just take an extra turn then. Okay, we have the Scholar combo. But I don't have anything in my graveyard. Like... Scholar copy Sublime Epiphany, and then I'm not copying anything after the fact. So I think it might actually just be better here to mastery the Star of Extinction right now. <laughs> How many times must the world blow up?
Life is simply a handicap. I don't need 20 to win. Is this just Polychronos from the graveyard? It is. We are A-OK -okay with that. Now what? I guess because the midnight clock is going to pop off, we're going to go ahead and just do the Scholar play. Nothing to copy again, unfortunately, but... So now this hand is going to go away. Because Midnight Clock is going to hit the 12. Destroy all my creatures, that's fine. So float a mana before it pops. In case we want to cast an instant. Like Magma Opus? Uh... No, we don't need to. Draw for turn, land. I'm just going to Opus them on upkeep to tap down their current only green source. Still have our Al runs in the deck somewhere. Oh no! <laughs> Killed by the Rankle. Well, I don't think I made a mistake necessarily, but I guess I could have played it safer. Uh, just let them untap with green and hold up the opus. That was totally winnable. There was no reason not to play it safe, I guess. I guess it, in the end it was a punt, not even hindsight. We know Rankle's in the format. We played against it earlier in this draft, so that's on me. We're simply making it exciting, though, because now we go to the final game. This is round, or, yeah, round number nine. We are six and two. And looks decent. Turn to a braid, turn three map activate. I got too confident, and then we got spankled by the wrinkle. Hello. It's a Zagoth Triome. No plays, that's great for us. That gives us an open window for search. Don't need to abrade anything. The Nissa. I feel like Epiphany is too insane not to keep, but seven mana is a little bit of a tall order here. Um. Yeah, I guess I'll just pop that off. It's not mana efficient, but it can ramp them. It's not like a braid is going to get too much better unless they have some uh, some crazy artifact. I right, just can't it down. I'm okay with this. Let's go relic into map. Even though we won't be able to activate the map here, that means we can, in theory, frost titan next turn, assuming they don't get rid of the relic or whatever. Obviously, Pilgrim is fine. Cobra is fine. Okay, mana sources for them. No blocks. They have Death Touch, so they should attack.
I will spin the map on upkeep. Keep tapping down their triome. And let's just hold up the commit. Oh, I can Epiphany from the graveyard, too. Yikes. Because we discarded it. Because normally the Epiphany exiles itself, but... Um, that's fine. So we might just win here next turn. So I don't even think I scry, because now we just wanted to hit a land. Darn it. Tap the Triome. And I think we're going to bounce the Pilgrim here, surprisingly. Just take them off another mana. And that's probably game over, I'm guessing. Could have just opus here. There's, there's no wrong way to do this. I'm going for the more fun play of casting Scholar and taking another turn. We might as well, since this is our final game, after all. Got him. Phew. Glad we got to seven, because that deck was nice. Just classic blue-red goodies. As always, friends, thanks for hanging out. Hopefully you enjoyed a little bit of look of cube before we get to the Lost Caverns of Ixalan. So we'll see you back next time. Bye-bye.